Okay, so here we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing real numbers. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is we'll, we'll show how signs impact multiplication and division of real numbers. The main takeaway from this section, if I had to summarize it in 60 seconds, I would say, or less, I would say it's right there. The thing you need to remember is when you're multiplying or dividing real numbers, if they have the same sign, the resulting number is going to be positive. So if you multiply two positive numbers or two negative numbers or divide two positive numbers or two negative numbers, you're going to get a positive number. If one's positive and one is negative, you're going to get a negative number. So that's the thing to remember. And we'll do some examples of this here. Okay, so next we're also going to talk about the multiplicative identity property and the multiplicative inverse property. Okay, so let's just talk about multiplying uh, some numbers here. We'll start off with an example of a positive number times a negative number. So I just picked it, uh, some numbers at random, 3 times 5. And remember, you can think about multiplication as being repeated addition. So you could think, for example, the first number, that's how many sets of the next number. That's how many copies of that next number that you have. So in this case, that means I have 5 plus 5 plus 5. I have it three times, right? I have it three times. So I'm doing repeated addition. Likewise, you could have thought you had five sets of three. You could have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. And you would arrive at the same solution. Okay, so in this case, we simply get 15. Well, let's think if we have positive 3 times negative 5. Well, again, we're just going to repeat the addition. I've got three copies of negative 5 that I'm adding together. Well, a negative and a negative and a negative, if we add them all together, that's going to give me negative 15. And that suggests the following. It says the product of two negative numbers with different signs is negative. So you can have a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive. It does not matter. Okay, so notice in all of my examples, A, B, and C here, in each case, one of the numbers is positive and one of the numbers is negative. So I know that when I multiply them, I'm going to get a negative number. So after that, I just forget about the signs. I think, what's 3 times 8? What's 7 times 6? What's 3 fourths times 2 fifths? So for my first example, 3 times 8, that's going to be 24. But again, I've already thought about the sign, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Again, 7 times 6, because I've already accounted for the sign, that's going to be negative 42. And last but not least, I could cancel some factors. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then I just multiply the numerators. So 3 times 1 is 3. 2 times 5 is 10, so I'm going to be left with negative 3 over 10. Again, recognizing that I've already accounted for the sign. Okay, what if we multiply two numbers that are both negative? So let's try to spot a pattern here. So I've got a bunch of numbers, and notice that in each time I'm multiplying some number by negative 3. And on the left, my first factor is simply decreasing. 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. Well, let's spot a pattern here. So... 3 times negative 3, that's negative 9. 2 times negative 3, that's negative 6. 1 times negative 3, that's negative 3. And notice on the my solution, every time, right, I'm it, it's uh, the number is increasing by 3 units. So 0 times negative 3, that's going to be 0. And then to keep this pattern going, negative 1 times negative 3 should be positive 3. And negative 2 times negative 3 is going to be positive 6. So what it looks like to me is if we multiply two negative numbers together, we get a positive number. And as we've already seen in the past, a positive times a positive is a positive. So another way to think about it, I always thought about it as direction on a number line. So I think I'm going negative 3 units, but I'm doing that twice. So I'm going negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. There's one time, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. There's another time. And that's going to put me at negative 6. And again, we said a positive times a negative is going to be a negative number. I thought about still the same thing. This first number tells me how much I stretch it. So I'm going to stretch uh, negative 3 by a factor of 2. But this number out front changes the direction. 
And when you see things, there's things called vectors that you'll, especially those of you that go into physics, and you'll kind of see this notion where if you multiply a vector by a negative number, it actually reverses, it changes its direction by 180 degrees. So before we said we would have been over here at negative six, but instead I'm gonna move to the right from zero. So I would go to the right uh, three units twice. So again, you could think I'm taking this first part and then I'm just reflecting it over about, uh, about zero. So in this case, again, we're gonna get the value positive six. So just a couple different ways to think about it. Again, the moral of the story, the product of two numbers with the same sign is positive. So just like before, um, so we'll talk about D here in a second, but in A, B, and C, notice again, I've got either two positive numbers or two negative numbers multiplied together. So in each case, I know I'm gonna get a positive number. And then again, I just multiply. What's four times two? Well, four times two is eight. What is eight times five? Well, eight times five is 40. What's one half times one fifth? That's gonna be one tenth. Again, recognizing that all of these are gonna be positive. Sometimes you'll see these examples like part D, and the idea is you just wanna pair things up. I've got all these negative ones multiplied together. So notice I've got two negative ones multiplied, negative one and negative one. That's gonna be a positive number. Negative one and negative one is gonna be a positive number. And then again, I'm gonna get another positive number. And lastly, I've got another negative one times a negative one, which is another positive number. So ultimately it says I have a positive times a positive times a positive times a positive. Well, that's gonna give me a positive number. And then I've just got a bunch of ones multiplied. So this solution is simply gonna be equal to positive one. Okay, so let's talk about now the multiplicative, in, uh, multiplicative identity. So start with any non-zero number, and the question is, what number can you multiply that number by so that, that it does not change? So six times what is six? Negative one-half times what is negative one-half, and 18 times what is gonna give us 18? Well, six times one still stays six. Negative one-half times one is negative one-half, and 18, 18 times one is still 18. So this is the idea. One is the multiplicative, the multiplicative identity. It's what you can multiply any number by so that it doesn't change. Remember that zero, that is the additive identity because that's the only number you can add to any number and not change it. Okay, so... Uh, last little remark here, do note that multiplying any number by zero gives zero. So five times zero is zero, negative one half times zero is zero, zero times that negative, you know, seven digit number, that's also zero. So do keep that in mind. Basically says you have zero copies of that number. Well, if you got zero copies of it, you got zero, you got nothing. So another question here. So for any non-zero number a, we wanna know what could you multiply a by in order to get one as a, the, uh, the product. And this number changes for each non-zero number. So I'm not saying, you know, there's only one multiplicative identity, but for each distinct non-zero number you give me, that's gonna have its own unique uh, um, multiplicative inverse, is what I'm trying to say. So we're now talk about, talking about multiplicative inverses. Well, two times what would give us one? Well, two divided by two is one, and that's the same thing as multiplying by one half. So two times one half is one. 10 times one over 10 is one. Well, let's see, one third times what? If I have three one thirds, that would give me one. And what else? Negative two over seven times what? Well, I know I would need a negative because a negative times a negative is a positive. And then let's see if I put a seven on top and a two on a two on, in the denominator, it looks like all of these factors would cancel out, and yeah, that's just gonna leave me with a positive one. So the idea is, we can write this a little more, a little more succinctly. We can say that the number one over a is the multiplicative inverse is the multiplicative inverse of 
A. And again, A has to be non-negative, okay? Can't be zero. And that's what we're doing. We're just taking one over the number. One over two is one half, one over 10 is one tenth. And recall that when you take uh, one over a fraction, you just flip the fraction over. So one over a third is gonna be three over one or three. And it's, it, again, if you flip the fraction, negative two over seven, you're gonna get negative seven over two. So that's what we're doing. We're just taking one over the number to get that multiplicative inverse. And the reason why multiplicative identities and multiplicative inverses are important is, again, it's just going to be another technique that we use to simplify these expressions and these equations when we're trying to find solutions, which is going to be very important. Okay, division of real numbers, it's the same for multiplication. If you divide two numbers with the same sign, the result is positive. If you divide two numbers with different signs, the result is negative, which makes sense. I mean, to me, I always thought about multiplication and division as basically being one and the same anyway. Okay, so I've got a positive over a negative. Hey, that's a negative. 10 over 2, that's 5, so I get negative 5. I've got a negative divided by a negative. That means I'm going to get a positive. 10 over 2, again, is going to be, so in this case, I'm going to get positive 5. So negative 8 over negative 3, a negative over a positive is a negative. 18 divided by 3 is 6. 40 divided by 4, well, they're both positive. I'm going to get 10 as my solution. So the next question is, what is the one real number we cannot divide by? Okay, there's one number you can't divide by. Well, let's see, 10 divided by 2, that's 5. And the way that you can sort of check this is you can sort of reverse the order. You can say your solution that you found, if you multiply that by the denominator, that needs to equal what you get on top. So if I take 5 times 2, so my solution times the denominator, that needs to equal the numerator. Okay, so 14 divided by 7, that's 2. And again, that works out because the solution times the denominator equals the numerator. Zero divided by eight. Well, if I've got zero things and I share that with my eight friends, we still get zero things. And that makes sense because my solution times the denominator equals the numerator. Okay, 12 divided by zero, what is that? Well, it's not... 12, because then it would say 12 times 0 equals 12, which it doesn't. So it's not 12. Is it, what is it? Well, that's the point. Uh, it's undefined. There's, I was going to say there's no solution, but let's just say undefined. That makes more sense in this context. It's not a number. It's kind of like when we were talking about uh, expressions at the beginning. We had something like 3 plus times plus 5. Yeah, you're using symbols, right? There's multiplication and there's addition and there's numbers. But this also just doesn't mean anything in mathematics. It's just not, uh, it has no... No use. We just can't comprehend it. It doesn't make anything useful. So the same thing, 12 divided by 0, that's just simply not a number. So in the same way, we can put these numbers together, but it just doesn't mean anything. So 12 divided by 0 is undefined. So that's what I have here, a big no-no. Just don't divide by 0. I see it happen all the time. Uh, it's quite common, so... But yeah, be careful. So let's talk about the order of operations, and then we're just going to do a bunch of examples. So you may have seen sometimes they, please excuse my, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's how I always heard it as a kid. So the P stands for parentheses. Parentheses, always forget how to spell that word. So that's kind of gets the highest priority. We, we simplify things in parentheses. Then we do exponents next. Multiplication and division are next in line. And if you see a string like 5 times 4 divided by 7, it doesn't matter. Multiplication and division, whoops, I wrote them all in the same line, kind of have equal priority. And then the convention is we go left to right. And I think I have a few of those in there. And lastly, we do addition and subtraction. Okay, so let's do some examples. So I've got a positive one, or excuse me, I've got a negative times a positive, negative one third times six, so that's gonna be a negative. And that's the same thing as six divided by three, or that's gonna give me negative two. You could think about this as being six over one, 
If we simplify the numerator and the denominator, we'll get 6 over 3, and again, that reduces to negative 2. So I've got a negative number times a negative number. That's going to give me a positive number. 9 times 8 is 72. 0 times anything is 0. A negative and a negative make a positive. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And 5 divided by 5 is also 1. And notice these are multiplicative inverses of each other. We've got the reciprocal of each number. So you just, you're just flipping the fraction. And again, we said in that case, you're going to get 1 as a solution. Okay, so a negative over a negative, that's going to be a positive. Let's see, 96 divided by 8, that should be 12. Negative 10 divided by 0, oh no, you can't do that. So in my next one, I think, okay, negative 8 times negative 3 in the numerator, that's going to be positive 24. I've still got my negative 2 in the denominator. Well, now I've got a positive over a negative, which is a negative, and 24 divided by 2 is 12. So here comes some of our order of operations. Notice we could use the property of distribution on this one, but I'm just going to simplify inside the parentheses. So 6 minus 2, that's going to be 4. A negative times a positive is a negative. And again, 3 times 4 is 12. Okay, so order of operations. I see this 4 minus 5, but I also see negative 2 times 4. That's multiplication, and that gets priority. So a negative times a positive, negative 2 times negative 4, that's going to be negative 8 minus 5. Since they're the same sign, I, I see a negative 8 and a negative 5. I could pretend it says positive 8 plus positive 5. That would be 13, but they're both negative. Okay, so I do have one of these examples here. Notice I have 4 times 6 divided by, that's supposed to be a 2, it kind of looks like a d, divided by 2 minus 3 squared. So I'm going to do it left to right. So the multiplication will come before the division. And then I can also simplify this 3 squared. So 4 times 6, that's 24, divided by, I still have my 2, minus. Now, the only number being squared is the 3, so be careful there. So the minus sign still comes along. 3 squared is equal to 9. Well, now uh, division happens before subtraction. So 24 divided by 12 excuse me, 24 divided by 2, that's going to give me 12, minus 9, and that's going to equal positive 3. Okay, same thing here. I see addition, but the division gets priority. And again, I'm going to do my exponent. So this is going to be 4 plus, so positive 6 divided by 2 is 3. This is going to be minus 9. And now I can just go straight across. 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 minus 9, that's going to be negative 2. Okay, so here I have negative 9 squared minus the quantity negative 5 squared. So again, the only thing being squared is the 9, not the negative. 9 times 9 is 81. There's my minus sign. Now negative 5 times negative 5 is going to be 25. So there's my original negative, and my negative times a negative becomes a positive. So negative 81 minus 25, that looks like what? Negative 106. So I think we've got two more here. Okay, so I'm going to do inside the parentheses first. I'm going to do the multiplication. So 3 times 2 is going to be 6. And then I'm going to add to that the plus 5. So really, this is going to give me 11 to the second power. So I'm going to do the exponents first. I don't do 4 plus 11. I have to do the exponents first. So 11 times 11. Well, 11 times 11, that's 11 squared. That's going to be the same thing as 121, and if we add those, we get 125. Last but not least, let's do this one more time. So I'm going to do the exponent. So I've got negative 11 minus 3 squared, which is 9. Let's see, I've got 2 plus, inside the parentheses, I've got negative 3 times positive 2. A negative times a positive is a negative, so I'll get negative 6. So in the numerator, I've got, let's see, a negative 11 minus a 9. So that's going to be negative 20. 2 plus negative 6, that's the same thing as 2 minus 6, or negative 4. A negative over a negative is a positive. And then 20 divided by 4, well, that's simply going to leave me with positive 5 as my solution. 
So, okay, a bunch of different examples. Again, uh, same number, you get a positive. Uh, opposite signs, I should say, same signs, not same number. Same signs, you get a positive number. Opposite signs, you get a negative number. And then again, we'll still talk about this idea of, uh, you, we'll definitely be using multiplicative inverses and multiplicative identities to solve equations.